are you feeling today? Yeah. I'm going to introduce myself in my language as I've been taught to do. How am I talking to you? I'm going to talk to you. 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 My name is Dallas Goldtooth. I'm a Dakota man from my, my Dakota homelands mm. to the northwest of here. Yeah. And I greet each and every one of you with a good heart. We're here for a powerful message. We're here for a powerful reason. To get right down to it, I've dedicated my entire life to indigenous rights, to the, to, for the land to give back to our peoples, our indigenous peoples. I've dedicated my life to see the liberation of indigenous peoples on Turtle Island. I've dedicated my life to the dismantling of white supremacy. And I know that journey is incomplete. I know that my fight is not whole unless I'm also advocating for the liberation of black people. If I do not understand that my struggle is connected with my relative's struggle, then we're going to fail. And that's why we're here, to connect our struggles. I want to recognize the territory in which we, we currently walk. The original territories well, the Three Fires Confederacy, the Odawa, Anishinaabe, the Potawatomi, the Miami, a number of other nations, the Sac and Fox, the Meskwaki, all walk these lands and use this space for trade. We recognize the ancestors. I want to say thank you to the relatives who shared song with us just now, who grounded us in this place, who brought the ancestors to this place. And together, for those of you that stood in the four directions, what we are doing is collectively casting our voices out to each of the directions and asking for the ancestors to be with us here. This struggle is a righteous struggle and it takes each and every one of us to break down this system that is predicated on the oppression of many for the benefit of a few. And so thank you for being here today. I don't want to take up more space. I'm going to ask my relative, my, my, uh, my nephew here to come on up. Winfield's going to come up and share a song with us. And so I want to uh, give you recognition. Let's give a round of applause for Winfield. Thank you. Thank you. I'm to sing a song today to heal all of the brothers and sisters out there that lost their lives. Protesting for the rights that we deserve. Oh.
for y'all today. A beautiful action to remind this city that we are not separated, that we are not backing down. We have not given up since May 30th when they beat us with baton. A few blocks that way. We will continue to be out here. We will continue to be out here. Yeah. Today, we are demanding not only that they defund CPD. But this right here is the best, most intentional, most beautiful display of black and brown joy that I have seen in a long time. If you're here right now, you can look to your left and to your right. And if you're here right now, that means that you are aware of the times that we are in. If you're here right now, you are hyper aware of the times that we're living in right now. You know that it's not time for that on the fence allyship that I've seen from some people. This isn't the time for your respectability politics. I'm gonna say it again. This is not the time for your respectability politics. Not when black trans women are being beheaded in the streets. Not when that's happening, happening now. Not when poisonous pipelines are being built on indigenous lands. Right, right. And not when the police, not when the police are given a budget of one point eight billion dollars to continue to lynch black and brown folks. What? Fuck twelve. Yes. It is time for intentional moves and only intentional moves between us. It is not the time for division, not when for hundreds of years black and indigenous people have been oppressed, raped, slaughtered, ignored, stepped on, beaten, systematically and systemically violated. It is only time for the aggressive togetherness that we are demonstrating here right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. It is time for reparations to be given to all black people. Yeah. 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 The very first black women for the work and pain that our ancestors have gone into putting and building this fucking country. Yeah. It is time for the city of Chicago and the rest of this country to give back all of its stolen land that they reside on. Not only defund, but also 
I'm gonna leave because it's hot as hell up here. But we got melanin, right, y'all? Yeah! I'm gonna remind you why we're here today. We're here today to gather. We're here today to celebrate, to pray, to be united, to be one, and to fight against white supremacy because I think we're all a little bit tired of trying to convince y'all that we matter. I think we're a little tired of trying to convince you that our lives mean something. And at the very least, matter is the least y'all can do when acknowledging our presence and our contribution to this country. I thank you all, and I hope you all continue to fight back for some more. get to be a hashtag. A long list of names that'll never get to be a hashtag. That ain't right. Because how many brothers they kill? How many sisters they kill? How many mothers they kill? How many fathers they kill? It's too many. We cannot be out here protesting every single time they kill one of us. That's why we got to stop this shit before it happens again. That's why. Why we have to have community control of the motherfucking cops. That is why we need to have CPAC now. When I say CPAC, you say fight back. CPAC. CPAC. When I say CPAC, you say fight back. CPAC. CPAC. Now, some people are still curious, you know, what makes CPAC different? Why is that so many black-led organizations like the Chicago Alliance and Black Lives Matter Chicago, why have they supported CPAC since it was first drafted in 2012? Well, that's because CPAC is not some bullshit police reform. CPAC is not a review board. We wouldn't make recommendations to decision makers. With CPAC, we are the decision makers. <laughs> We wouldn't have to make a suggestion to the mayor about who we think should be the police superintendent. With CPAC, we would appoint the police superintendent. We wouldn't have to submit ideas about we hope what we hope police policy should be. With CPAC, we write and have the final vote on all police policy. And we wouldn't have to ask city council, would you please defund the police for us? We wouldn't have to beg them for 10% of the budget, 20% of the budget, 50% of the budget, 75% of the police budget. With CPAC, we can defund the police. always show up to these protests because they're scared. They're scared of us 
and our power. Because they know and we know that they're about to lose their jobs. You are about to lose your job. You are about to lose your job. You are about to lose your job. Y'all gotta be hyped for this performer. They're a Chicago native. They're about to blow up. And we can't look goofy in our own city. So, you about to lose your, you know, I want y'all to be in the crowd. One, two, three, say, you about to lose your job. Give her some love real quick. Yeah. Oh my God, it's a lot of people here. Hey everyone. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? So I'm gonna do this song, there's a little chant in this song. So I need y'all to help me out. I'ma say, what side are you on, my people? What side are you on? And then you're gonna say we on the freedom side. So, so let's try that. What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? We on the freedom side. What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? We on the freedom side. What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? We on the freedom side. Cool. This song is called Fight Like Ida B and Marshall Lee.
and the revolution don't stop, y'all. You guys feeling all right? You guys feel a little mad? Upset? Tired of this bull? If you want to say hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Man, say fuck up. Fuck up. Say fuck ice. Fuck ice. Abolish all these fucking prisons. Abolish all these fucking prisons. Right now. Right now. I have this song called Bamba. Um, it's got a little bit more movement to it. So when this come on, everyone can just move a little bit, dance a little bit. If it's not too hot. I'm not that hot, but y'all might be a little hot. And then we're going to keep it going. I want to keep the energy going. The floor is back. That's what they say. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm going to bring up Sam to play some trumpet at the end of the song. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I haven't seen it for people in so long. So hell yeah. This song is called Bamba. Everybody can bump their heads. Everybody bump their heads. Everyone like, feel like I'm in water. Everyone's just like, I'm like, oh shit. Everybody bump their heads. Black art not bad art. Black art not sad art. Black art not mad art. Bamba, Bamba. I'm a black hero, Malcolm No Lito. I'm not here to dig clothes like Zero. I'm a rose to fall from the hero. Black is the name, great mind on Shaquille. Neo, how we change the game, incredible. So we went to how to act and start edible. Yo, she got to solve me if not legible. Better walk through to my slides and specials. Cause we ain't came to be acceptable. Smelling like cocoa, but in lip balls. Everyone run with a wave with some fall. Every trunk in the way can get mauled, y'all. I done came along. Way, but I still be stopped on me at the fountain In the fountain, I'm in the mountains Now I'm off on the winter, so I'm going to Black art, not bad art Black art, not sad art Where y'all at? Black art, not mad art Okay, bamboo, bamboo Black art, not sad art Right? Black art not bad art. Black art not bad art. Never, never. You can't block me out and shut me up. You can't block me out and bust me out. You can't block me out and drop me out. Black art not mad art. Look, Bamber, Bamber, everybody clap their hands. I saved the black of the barren, the sweet of the juice. I saved the black of the barren, the sweet of the juice. I saved the black of the barren, the sweet of the juice. I saved the black of the barren, the sweet of the juice. And oh, Sam!
things, right? Um, shared struggle and stewardship that outline black and indigenous, the history of black and indigenous solidarity. Um, and what I mean by stewardship, I mean getting right, getting a right in right relationship to the planet and to the environment, to the land, right? So, and unveiling that shared history of black and indigenous struggle and of our relationship to the land, especially in this time of, global, uh, of a global health crisis and economic crisis, we've seen not only our actions take up uh, more space and our actions contesting for more space, but we've also seen our ideas take up more and more space in the form of action through mutual aid efforts, through mass trainings, mass civil disobedience, returning that knowledge of struggle and liberation and goods and resources back into the hands of working and poor people. Those of us who are at the margins of our society and those queer and trans folks who are at the edges of those margins of within our society, right? Right, so why do we even have, why do we have to pay for healthcare? Why is food so damn expensive? Right? Why after moments of climate disaster, aren't people who are affected by that disaster awarded the right to return to their homes and their communities? <laughs> Free healthcare, guaranteed food, and housing uh, are not handouts. They're an obligation of our society to itself and the masses of our people, that, to the masses of people that created it and maintained the society. Not the rich, not the few of them. This is part of the other side of abolition. That part that our mayor doesn't want to talk about. Reinvesting money liberated from the police budget into public institutions that have been sorry, that have been divested from for generations. Also has to include greater control of those dollars and those institutions by the masses of workers, community orgs, community leaders, residents, to determine how those resources are used and that they're used for us, right? So as the world rises up to defund and abolish police violence, prisons, ICE, and return that, that land to the stewardship of indigenous people and to abolish racial capitalism, that revolution must fight for the return of the commons. These common things, land and resources, and space to the control and stewardship of working class, poor, 
and black and indigenous and oppressed people from across the world. Thank you. speaker for y'all. I'm bringing up Miracle from Good Kids, Mad City. As a member of Good Kids, Mad City, I am here to say we are here standing in solidarity with our brothers and sisters from orgs such as OCAD, the Black Abolitionist Network, and our indigenous family whose land we stand on today. come to a point in time where police haven't had their red table talks. America, and specifically speaking, Chicago, has spent billions of dollars on police without a proven fact that they make our community safer. Last time I checked, poverty has had a direct correlation with the inflammation of gun violence and investing in our communities is the solution. Money for schools, money for education, money for mental health, teachers, students, communities, restorative justice, giving the community the ability to keep itself safe, and most importantly, money for everybody. Other no! major cities such as Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Oakland, San Francisco, and New York City disinvest in their police departments and see a substantial decrease in any type of violence. However, Chicago is the only major city who has yet to divert funds from our police department. That ain't right! That ain't right! Officials have used our suffering and trauma for centuries to hurt us even more. We are not asking for more police, but to defund from them and heal our communities with our peace group. We want care for communities and not cops. We want to defund the police and fund our neighborhoods and schools. We want to dismantle cops. We want reparations for victims and families of police brutality and police killing. <laughs> We support the call to disinvest 75% from Chicago's police department budget and reallocate those funds to free housing, free mental, free mental health, a living wage, but, but specifically speaking, we, GPMC, want 2% to fund our peace book ordinance. The peace book ordinance invests in Chicago's youth, people, and recognizes their unique expertise in readdressing two issues that have plagued Chicago for over 100 years. Violence perpetuated by police against community members and violence perpetuated between community members. The Peace Book will serve as a public safety resource for the city that will highlight all the ways black and brown people, and particularly youth, to keep their community safe. The Peace Book will also continue to for Chicago, Imata Hashni. Ian was Laha, now Minneapolis, Imataha. Ampe Tio Kin, the Iuha, Wopila, the Chichiakilo. I want to thank all of you for being here today in the spirit of solidarity and justice for black and indigenous communities. I 
as a black and indigenous person. can say a slogan. Even Walmart and the NFL and Starbucks have learned to say Black Lives Matter. And I'm sure we do matter to their bottom line. Instead of rehearsed platitudes, what I have to offer you is my attention. Listening as a radical practice. There's a conversation that needs to be had between black and indigenous people beyond what is symbolically offered today in word or in gesture. A conversation only we can have and that we must have if we are to make the word solidarity mean anything. I can tell you as a black and indigenous person that there is much misinformation and prejudice between us. We've been pitted against each other for the benefit of the Washitu. We have a lot to unpack and a lot to unlearn and it will be difficult work, but I promise you, it will be worth it. Yeah. So let us speak with one another and let us, let us listen generously until we know on a deep intellectual, emotional, and spiritual level the simple reality that our fate is intertwined. Yes. Our survival, our freedom, our futurity are woven in interdependence like the roots of a forest. That is our strength, not our weakness. Black and indigenous folks are the most dangerous union to the stability of America. We are the most dangerous union to the stability of America because we know that we are not Americans. We are older than America. to this land. We are descendants of millions of human beings that were stolen and brought here under the most vile of conditions. We understand that the premise of America is our subjugation and erasure. And we know that the injustices we see today are not a mistake, but the product of a colonial system that profits off of our oppression. That is why what others bemoan as strange and uncertain times, we see as an opportunity to tear down a system that has always been violently abnormal, immoral, and unsustainable. We share that perspective. We share that perspective. We see that truth and bear the scars to prove it. So take this rally for solidarity not as a declaration of success, but a statement of intention to be in this practice of decolonization together. <laughs> Lastly, if you're a cis het man, I especially invite you to shut the f up and listen. <laughs> and take up too much of the time, energy, and space 
Hey, we should. Let us do better. Let us do better by supporting and learning from the women, queer and true spirit folks of color. It's the best advice I've ever received, and I offer it to you. Our success is dependent upon it. It's dependent upon it. How oh, woke is our country? I want y'all to really listen to me, because this is important. When we say solidarity, we don't just—we're not just saying it. We mean it. That means we need to be in solidarity. We need to actively be in solidarity, especially in this moment, in this March. May 30th, May 31st, and June 1st. I watched people I love be beaten. I myself was hit by a police van that did not care anything for my safety at all. Only about property and the people they were taking. Now they're right. And do you know when they are able to hurt us the most? When we separate. When we decide that we've done enough, we're gonna go ahead and dip. When we decide that we're scared and we can't do it anymore, I want to tell y'all that fear is real to be out. That fear is very real. But at the same time, and I say this with a lot of love, that fear. Because if I could be hit with a police van, if the people I love could be beaten bloody, bloody, and taken to jail cells, for demanding justice for black people and still be out here every day, then you can be out here every day. That fear says that you are alive. That fear says that you are aware of the power that these motherfuckers hold or that they, that they think they hold. They think they yeah. hold. But guess what? There are more of us than there are them. <laughs> so if you feel any fear today, which is real, because I don't know if y'all have been paying attention to what's happening in Portland right now. Mm -hmm. There are feds that have infiltrated Portland that are kidnapping people, that are beating people, that are refusing the medical assistance, that are trying to shut down the movement because the movement in Portland hasn't stopped since day one. And Lori put out a cute little tweet about bye Karen. We're not gonna have the feds here. But that's right. Lori herself is the top cop. Let's not forget that on May 30th, while we were here, Lori told police to trap us downtown. They trapped people at Trump Tower and gas over and over, beat them with open fists, with batons. I would look to the, the right of me and see someone bleeding out, and the left, and see people trying to lift people who had been trampled because cops had uh, charged towards them. And other people who were just trying to get to their friends that were trapped at the tower, but that couldn't leave because they lifted the bridges. They told us 15 minutes before they even set the curfew that there was a curfew. We couldn't leave. We couldn't go anywhere. The only thing we could do was be out in the streets and be ready for a cop to hit us. Thousands of people were disappeared that weekend. 
It took forever to find them and some we still have not found. That ain't right. That's not gonna happen here today. And you know why that's not gonna happen here today? Because y'all are going to be in solidarity. The people in this crowd, the people around you, this is love. This is family. You watch out for the people around you. You make sure they get home. You support them and however they feel they need to protest because we don't police people's anger. These motherfuckers.